Mr. Fetty, Audrey here, and today I'm going to be conducting an experiment on how to find the mass of an object which is unknown by using the parallelogram law of vectors and the help of a Gravesand's apparatus. So first of all, for the materials that we need, we will need strings. So I cut out 1 meter and also 80 centimeters of these strings. And an unknown mass of an object, I will be using this as our mass. And for the known masses, I'll be using these um, identical hand sanitizers for the known masses. For the pulleys, I'll be using these identical bottles since they have um, a circular shape at its bottom. So I'm just going to be using that. And a mirror so that um, to mark the position later on. Also, a scale or a balance, I will be using that to uh, measure the mass of these known masses. And also, a protractor, a ruler, and this compass to mark the positions later on. And a pencil also to mark the positions. And scissors and also tape. I'll be using this tape to tape the pulley on the Gravesend apparatus. And that's all. And for the Gravesand's apparatus, I'll be using this simplified version, which is I taped a piece of paper onto a cardboard box, which I don't need anymore. And I put it on top of my chairs just to make it um, elevated from the ground. And I think that's all we need. So let's get started. So first of all, before we do anything, we should um, find out the mass of these identical masses because we're just going to use these um, to act as the known masses for our grief sense apparatus. So let's just put this on top of our balance. And there it shows 59 grams. So we're just going to um, try on the other one. And it also shows 59 grams. So since both are 59 grams, we can conclude that these are identical masses. And we're just going to record that on our table here, which I have prepared. And we're just going to put it on um, the forces of P and Q, each of 59 grams. Now we have our known masses recorded, each of 59 grams. So let's get started in our experiment. So first, for setting up the um, Gravesand's apparatus, what I did here was I just simply taped my pulleys on top of um, the cardboard box and I slinged this one meter string onto it. And next thing what we're going to do is we're going to tie on these identical masses onto um, each of the strings. So I'll just do that. I'll, I'll be back in a jiffy. So well, now I have tied my two identical known masses onto my Gravesend's apparatus and now I'm just gonna tie this unknown mass which I have tied onto my 80 meter, 80 centimeter string which I prepared before onto the string which I have on top of that. So I'm just gonna do that and I'll be back. So now I have tied on my unknown mass to my grave sense apparatus just like that one and make sure that the mass the known masses these identical ones are um, as level as possible to each other so we want this unknown mass to be as center as possible from both of the strings to make sure that it's balanced and now that our grave sense apparatus is complete we can start our experiment so the next step for our experiment is we're gonna um, take our mirror right here and we're just gonna slip it in there below the string and we're gonna mark off the points at the edges of the mirror where um, this string coincides so we can see that it coincides there so we're gonna mark it off yep. and we're gonna do the same for the other side so and lastly the bottom part and also the center. Yep, just 
just like that and we've marked all the points and so now we're gonna um, take out the paper and we're gonna try to um, connect all the dots so now I have removed our paper from the Gravesense apparatus and I don't know whether you can see it clearly there or not but I actually have these points plotted on my paper so what I'm just gonna do is we're just gonna make lines out of those points and let's see what we got so this is our center and um, yep, that's our first line just need to connect all the dots to the center. Yep, and there we have all our lines. Okay, so now that we know that um, P or P1 as we write here is 59 grams and Q is also 59 grams and so I'm using the scale that 10 grams is equal to 1 centimeter so OA is equal to 5.9 centimeters and OB is equal to 5.9 centimeters as well and so I'm just gonna plot 5.9 centimeters on this paper I'll mark that point A. And also 5.9 centimeters here. And I'll mark that point B. Okay, so now we have points A and B there on our paper. And I'm just gonna grab my compass and take 5.9 centimeters as well. And that should be about it. And I'm going to draw an arc each of 5.9 centimeters from points A and B. So, that's our first arc. And second one. And I'm going to um, name this point C. So, right there. And I'm just going to connect it to point O, or the center. And now that we have points C, A, and B, we're just going to connect these points. And we have something like that. Now we know that this is 5.9 and this is also 5.9 centimeters. And let's look at how long this is. This is 8 centimeters. Exactly 8 centimeters. Yep. So let's just plot that 8 centimeters. And now that we know that this is 8 centimeters, we can conclude that based on our scale that 10 grams is equal to 1 centimeter our um, mass should be about 80 grams. So let's just um, plot there on our table right here. And I'm gonna go back. So I put all of the information I have on my table right here. So OA is 5.9, OB is also 5.9, and OC as we mentioned before, it's 8. And so um, the unknown weight S from this the method is 8 times the scale, which is 10, so we get 80 grams. Okay. So now that we have calculated our um, mass of our unknown object using our first method, we can now proceed to using our second method, which is using a protractor to confirm um, the mass of our first method. So here's my protractor. And I'm just going to measure the angle AOB. So, yeah. And we can see that, I don't know if you can see it clearly, Mr. Fetty, but 
um, from my protractor, it says that angle AOB is about 94 degrees. So I'm just going to write it here. This is 94 degrees. And I'm just going to plot that on my table here on the theta. Theta here, 94. And I'm just going to fill in the cos and also calculate this using my calculator. So let's try it and let's see what we got. So as you can see here, I have just plotted my um, table and theta. So I put in, in theta 94 degrees and cos theta, I calculated it was approximately negative 0 0.0698, um, correct to three significant figures. And lastly, this equation, we got 80.5. Five approximately it was actually um, 80.47 something but um, nearest to three significant figures right so it's 80.5 so let's now move on to our calculations for our calculations um, we know that unknown weight s is 80 grams from this and unknown weight r is 80.5 grams which is this and so for the unknown weight we have S plus R divided by 2 to find the average, and we have 80.25 grams, or equal to 80.25 times 10 to the negative third kilograms in SI units. So this is our weight of our unknown mass. So as you can see here, um, there is actually a difference in the unknown weight s and the unknown weight r they are not exactly the same one is 80 grams one is 80.5 grams and i think this may be caused of um, some errors and uncertainties especially because this is just a homemade um, experiment so um first of all i think that the errors or uncertainties causing this difference is because I used um, a ruler and also a protractor. So a ruler approximately has an uncertainty of 0 0.2 centimeters, while um, a protractor approximately has an uncertainty value of one degree. So that may cause these differences in values. And also um, this may be caused by we are using this very homemade um, apparatus of the Gravesands apparatus and so um, we may have uncertainties and errors due to, for example, um, I used only those bottles as my pulleys, um, yeah, those. And so there may be increased um, friction between the bottles and also the strings so it um, pulls on the weight more and therefore it creates um, a difference in these values. And yeah, I think those are some uncertainties or errors which may have caused this difference in values for our experiment today. And so I think that's all from me now. Thank you.